discuss today. Recording in progress. So here the format specifier means if you want to give some input to the system, we have to give it into a specific data type. Either it may be character, or maybe integer, or the float, whatever it may be. So if you want to give data into the data types, then while giving the input, you have to use the format specifiers. You have to use the format specifier. Before going to the format specifier, we'll go to the data types, then I will go to the format specifier. We can easily understand. So let us see what are the different types of data types that are available in C. So what are the types of data type? Types of data types. They are one is the first one is basic data types. Next one, derived data types. Next one, enumeration data types. Enumeration data types. Finally, the last one is virtual database. One second. The last one is the void. So these are the basic data types that we have. Types of database. So we have four types of databases, data types. They are basic, derived, enumerated, and wise. So basic data types means here, integer, float, long integer, long float, double, and all these comes under the category of the basic data types. So in the basic data type, we'll have integer, float, pair, double, long int, long int, long double, etc. So these are all, these are all the different data types. These are all the different basic data types. When you come to the point of the derived data types, means the data types which were derived by ourselves. Examples, some examples are arrays. 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 Structures. Union. These are all called the derived data types. There is another data type called enum. We'll discuss it in later. The enum data type. And finally, the last one, the void data type. <coughs> when we use the void data types, it is mostly used while declaring the functions. It is mostly used while declaring the functions. So what exactly the void data type will do is, it tells that there is no return by the function. Generally, what is the advantage of using the function? When you write a function, that function can be used later. When you call the function into the main, the function will be executed. And whatever the results that is provided by the function has to be returned to the main function. But void, what it does is the function can be function will be called but there is no return from the function to the main program. So means that calculations will be happened in the function. And the value directly does not affect return into the main function. So that is called the void. So void means it returns nothing. Void means it returns nothing. So when you try when you write a main program and you have declared two variables, and you want to sum those two variables, you have cleared the variable sum, then sum equal to, you write a function, 
in some way and call the value to here but void will not allow to send a value from function to the main program but you can call the function the function itself come to here and will execute and show the output but the function will not ret any return any value into the main function so this is about the void so it means function mostly mostly used in declaring functions tells tells function does not return any value when it is called when it is called so when you use the void means if the function does not return any value in those cases we we'll use the void void data type so the data types are basically classified into four categories basic data types derived enumerated data types and void data types basic data types are integer float char double long integer long double etc <coughs> <clears throat> whereas derived data type arrays structures unions so derived means that is defined by us defined by us so how can you define our own data type so it is nothing but you are giving some name but you are using the same data type which is already exists as a basic data type so that is the derived data type means that you are defining a new data type but it contains already some basic data types let us see an example of structure if you want to store a record if you want to store a value you can declare a variable if you want to store a record at a time like serial number name course school etc at a time then you have to maintain a record if you want to store a record at a time then you have to group all the data types which are basic data types together and make as a single data type that is either the structure or union i will repeat again so derived data types will help you to make the combination of the basic data types it means when you see an example of serial number it is an integer name it is a character course it is a character call a school it is a character so here we have one integer data type and three character data types and what we are doing i am combining all the two data all the four two data types together and making as a single data type that is called the structure or union so mostly the structures or unions are basically used whenever you want to store the record data in the form of the records when you want to store individually you can use the basic data types sir what is array i will explain just as brief later classes we can understand more array let us see an example of character a character can take a single character a character variable can take a single character if you want to store but name or school course will have multiple characters in it so it is difficult to store multiple characters with the help of the character data type then you will make this character data type as a array type so how do you like that means you have to specify the size along with the variable name see an example car name it tells that name is a variable of character type and can store only single character when you use same thing as car name of 20 it says that name is a character variable that can store maximum of 20 characters whenever you are specifying the in bracket square brackets as a size then we can call it as an array we can call it as a array see a difference between the normal data type and array data type is like it in ta it is a normal data the basic data type in ar10 this is array 
So what is the difference between both of them? The first statement will allow us you to give a single value, whereas the second statement will give a possibility to store 10 values. So this is the logic. So it means that it is not necessary to declare 10 variables. Here I'm declaring only one variables, but I am mentioning the size. According to size, I can store that number of values. <coughs> so this is the advantage of the array. <coughs> so the basic data types we have, direct data types we have, enumeration we'll discuss later and why we can understand. So this is about the data types. Now, whenever you declare any vari any data type, any variable with a specific data type, then it will allocate some memory. It will allocate some memory. When you declare A into A, it will allocate A is a variable. A is a variable. A is a variable that will allocate some memory. And whenever you give a value to the A variable, variable A, that value will be stored in the specific memory location. So int a means you are declaring a variable a of type integer, then it automatically allocates some memory space. Whenever you give a value for the a, the value will be stored in the specific memory locations. So, so here we have different options that each and every data type has a different number of memory locations. So it means that integer need to have some memory size, character will occupy some memory, float will occupy some memory, double sum, long double sum, like that. So how can you judge it means these are the process we have to follow. The first one here I'm telling the integer. So when you declare a variable as an integer, it will occupies a two bytes. It will occupies two bytes memory. When you declare a variable, it will occupies one byte. Sir, I have doubt here. If I if I create the same character variable as an array, how many bytes will be occupied? See an example here int a. Here a is a variable of type integer that will occupy two bytes memory locations. If a of 10 if I specify, then what will be happen? Simply 10 into 2. 10 into 2. Simple as. So means the 20 bytes will be occupied. The same way when you go for the character type car name it will occupy a single byte. When you use char name of 30, what will accept? It will accept 30 characters. It means the 30 bytes. Because each character will take one byte, 30 characters will take 30 bytes. So that's why they have different, different logics like that. So in the case of double, in case of float, it will be the four bytes. In case of double, it is the 8 bytes, long double, it is a 10 bytes and so on, and so on. So, but we know we need it to be, uh, remember everything, how many bytes will be stored, but in general common sense, it is better to know it's there, sir. So, sir, how exactly I know that is the size of the bytes? So, when you write a program, we have a operator that is called the size of operator that will come to the operator section. With the help of the size of operators, we can easily find what memory space occupied by the data type. Okay. So in general, you have to remember is character will occupy one byte, integer will occupy two bytes, float will occupy four bytes, and double is 10 bytes, long double is 10 bytes. So this is you have to remember, remember clearly. So this is all about the data types. We have four basic data types, four types. One is basic, derived, enumerated, and wild. 
basic we have in flow care double lung it all this in this we have signed and unsigned also when you specify the signed when you specify the signed you have to mention the negative value or positive value first of all if it is unsigned you may take you may, you may give negative value or the positive value that is the wish okay so derived means it is a data type which is derived from an existing basic data type like creating an array like creating a structure or like creating a unit here structure and unit both are similar only some logic will be different that is the memory occupation that is the memory occupation that will be comes in later sections it will take a lot of time to go okay so these are the direct data types enumerated we'll discuss later after after the structures array structures and unit will get enumerated the void i will just explaining will come to the point of functions you can understand clearly so when you declare a function any function should have to return a value to the main function whenever it is called but in some situation it is not required to send a value to the main function in those cases we will make the function as void so void means it doesn't return any values okay <coughs> So now come to the point of the operators. Sorry, format specifiers. So what are the formats? We already spoke that we have the following data: basic data, int, char, uh, float, uh, double, uh, long, int. Yes. So how can I specify that? my i have to give the integer data type or the float data type or character data type when you giving input with the scanf function you must be aware that you have to specify the format specifies so for integer you have to give percentage d percentage d the character you have to give percentage c for float we have to give percentage f here you have to give lf means a long float w is nothing but a long float lf here percentage ld means a long integer integer means d ld means long integer long integer this you should have to remember while writing the scan of statement so basically the scan function of this scan of function is to give input to the system we want to give input to the system you must be aware that which type of data you are giving if you have to give the integer data type you have to use the percentage d if you have to use the float you have to use the percentage of if you want to use a double you have to use a percentage lf or long integer percentage ld so this you have to remember clearly now i will show you a program We'll write a program that you can understand the how the operators will work. <coughs> Open the software. So I am taking new file, writing the code like this. First, we have to mention the documentation part here. I am telling the demo on data types. A demo on data types. First, we have to use the linking file. Ash include stdio dot h. Ash include okay, next come to the main. So under the main. So what happened here? You are adding the forgot to close it. So, main. In the main, I have to write my code. First, I am declaring a variable in a. Next, I am declaring a variable char b. 
I am declaring a variable float c. Declaring a variable long int d double e double e. Okay. I have declared five data types: integer, character, float, long int, and double. Now I am accepting the values for one by one. Int f, int value for integer variable a. Okay. Yes, can I? So for integer, what format specifically you have to mention? You have to mention the percentage along with the address of the variable. Address of the variable means ampersand a. Ampersand reference the address of the variable. So in the same way, we will copy here and paste this pair character float long integer double. Now I am changing the content here. This is character. So for character, we have to use here the percentage c, and the variable is b. Here we have to use a float. So C that is here percentage of we have to use for float. Here long integer. So that is a D variable D. I have used here LD for long integer. LF. Here I have to use percentage LF. Double means LF. So, so this is the info. So when I execute this program, what will happen? It will give a message that enter the integer value. I will give you some value. Then it will store it to the integer variable A. Then character value it will be stored in the character variable. Float value it will be float variable. And long integer value is stored in the long integer variable. And double value is stored double. Value. So now again, I want to display the same content again. So I want to display whatever I have to win. So then I have to go again, print f. So here, value value for double variable is percentage is percentage d. So what will happen here? I will get a message that value for sorry, first one is value for integer variable is percentage. So first I will what will get here? I will get here. I will get a message that value for integer variable is next. I will get a value whatever I have stored in the end. So here I am using one concept that slash and we are discussed that to display the output on the next line. So now copy the same line and copy for multiple points. One, two, sorry. So now I'm changing them. Here it is B has to B and here it is C. Here it has to D. Here it has to D. But you have to remember thing. So here First is integer, that's why percentage D. Next is character, percentage C. You have mentioned percentage C. Next one is float. You have to mention percentage F. Here, long integer, LD. Here, LF. And also change here also. Character. Change it as a float. Here it is change to the long int. Here you can change this double. Okay. <coughs> this is all about the program. What is the output of this program is first, whenever you execute this program, it will create five, it will declare five variables of different types and allocates the memory for those variables. And next, whenever you give the input, those values will be stored to the respective memory locations. And finally, what are the values I have stored? 
those will be shown to me again. So whenever you have to uh, compile, first what you have to do, you have to save the file, save it. I'm giving as a data type data demo, data demo dot C. So now execute and compile. I think no errors, very good. Now execute and run. So here, first it asks me enter the value for the teaser variable. You can give minus values or plus value. I will give it minus 10. Next, it is you are not asking for the right is coming to the character variable because I will explain what is the reason behind it. Next, the enter value for float variable. So, so I have to forgot to change the names. Variable B, variable C, how to change. Again, I will go back again. See here, so I have made some mistake here. What that mistake is here, I forgot to change this name. This is B. This is C. This is D. This is E. So here, and, and more thing, second thing, I will change something here. Instead of percentage D, I will, I will try to use like this. B equal to get CH. So Y means, what it will do is, get CH is a function that will accept a character from the user. And whatever the character that will be inputted by the user that will be stored in the respective variable. Here it asks for the variable, it is after the character. If I enter a character value A, that value will be stored in the variable B. So why you can't use the percentage C means the problem is the data type, whenever you take the at other data type, it is too difficult to take the character data type. So that's why if you want to use character alone, you can use no problem. Otherwise, if you use a character for the first as the first variable, first input it is okay. But here I'm taking the first integer, then I'm taking the character. That's why that's why it, it problem with the memory location. So that's why what I do, what I am doing here is I am using the function get ch, which allows you to give input as a single character, and the character that is inputted by us will be stored in a variable b. So I will go and execute once again the compile it. No errors. So now see here, I am entering the minus 10. So now the B variable B is M E, capital E, enter. Enter the value for variable C. What is the variable float? So I mean 45.223, some whatever. Enter the value for long integer, variable D. Long integer means more than the integer size. Generally integer size not more than the nine, five digits. So here I am giving the six digits. 3, 4, 3, 2, 4, 5, or 7. Whatever you can do today. Okay, then press enter. And the double value. Double value means more than the float value. So you see, I'm increasing the decimal points here. So see, whatever the input you have given that is displaying here. See here, A is minus 10, B is E, and uh, Float variable is 45.3333 and long int is the value. See whatever the value I have given, that value is storing here. So double value is this one. So what is the advantage of using a long integer and double value here is, if you want to specify more number of digits, then you have to use a long integer. If you want to specify the more number of decimal points, you have to use the double. So you have to remember this. So this is all about the data types. Okay, now again we'll come back to the window. So we understand how we use the, how we use the format specifiers in our program. Now the next topic is the operators. So what is meant by operator? Operator is a symbol. Operator is a symbol which is used to make an evaluation. Example, if you want to add, you will use the plus symbol. If you want to subtract, you will use the minus symbol. If you want to multiply, you will use the star symbol. If you want to compare, you will use the greater than or less than symbol. So here the operator is nothing but a symbol 
that is used to for comparison to make expression evaluation whatever it may be to do some process will use the operators so operators will do the process on the operands what are the operands here where we use the operators those are called the operands on which we are using the operators are called the operands so see an example c equal to a plus b here c a b are the operands and plus is the operator plus is the operator equal to is the operator so what happened here if you take the operand a and operand b and add it to those numbers and storing into the another operand c so this is the concept so see the what are the different types of operator first one arithmetic next one logical arithmetic logical relational arithmetic logical relational assignment conditional special conditional special and bit wise bit wise operators are arithmetic logical relational assignment conditional special bit wise and finally the increment or decrement so these are the various operators that we have available in the c programming language so what is the purpose of the arithmetic logical relational assignment conditional special bit wise and increment decrement we will see one by one now so here the purpose of the arithmetic operators are if you want to add if you want to subtract if you want to multiply if you want to divide if you want to get the remainder here the percentage refers to the remainder so when you divide a value with another value we'll get two things one is the remainder second one is the question here divided by gives the value of gives the value of quotient Your percentage will give the value of remainder. So to perform those calculation, we use the arithmetic logical means and r and r. So here and means double ampersand symbol. This is double ampersand. This is double pipe symbol. So where will exactly have this pipe symbol means we'll have the pipe symbol above the enter keyboard. Above the enter keyboard, but you have to use along with the shift. You have to use along with the shift. Okay. So next one, the logical operators are over. There are only two operators, and and or. So where we use and and where we use or means and is used if you want to check both the condition has to be satisfied. Let us see. I want to calculate the performance of grade. If a student get more than Thirty-five percent in sports and more than thirty-five percent in academics, he will be he will be pass. Here, what I am doing, I am comparing. I am taking two things: one is the sports marks and another is the academic marks. But in the both cases, he should have more than thirty-five percent. That is called and. So most of both the condition has to be satisfied here. If I ask if the academic is above thirty five and above thirty five or sports is above thirty five, means that 
if we require if we acquire more than 35 in academic and less than 35 also he will pass if you get more than 35 in sports and less than 35 in academic also per mass. That is called R. Either this condition or that condition has to be satisfied. And means both condition has to be satisfied. Next come to the relational, relational, here I will write relational operators. These are less than greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, equal to. This is called the equal to. Means that I'm checking the condition that E, if A is equal to B, A is equal to B. It means I am checking the condition whether the value in B is equal to A or not. That is the question here. That is called the relational. If I if I see an example, if I tell A equal to B, that what the sense, whatever the value in B will be stored in K. When you ask for A equal to B, it means that is the value in B equal to A. That is called the relation operator. That is called the relation operator. Here, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, Less than, greater than, equal to, equal to, not equal to, everything will come under the relational operators. How do you check if you want to compare two numbers? Is A is greater than B? Is A is less than B? Is A equal to B? Is A not equal to B? Then if you look, A is less than or equal to B, or A is greater than or equal to B, in those cases, we use a relational operators. And next one, that is assignment operator. Assignment. So equal to, simple equal to is called assignment operator. Assignment operator is used to store a value into a variable or store the result of an expression into a variable. See here, a equal to 10. a equal to 10. Here, a, a value 10 will be stored into a variable a. See here, c equal to a plus b. Here, the result of the expression a plus b result of the expression a plus b will be stored into the variable c. So it means that the result of expression can be stored with the help of assignment operator into another variable. The value can be stored directly into a variable with the help of the assignment operator. So assignment operator will be used in two cases. If you want to store directly a value, you can use either if you want to store the result of an expression also you can use assignment operator. That's the conditional operator. So here the conditional operator means it's just like a substitution for question mark colon. Question mark colon is the conditional operator. It's check for the condition only. See an example that A greater than b see here a greater than b question mark a colon b so this is simple logic so what is this output of here here if the value in a is greater than b i will get output as a if the value is greater than if the value in a is not greater than B, then you will get the value of B as output. So this is simple logic. We can use this instead of using the if statement. We'll discuss later further. The condition of is question mark column. Here an example states that if the value in A is greater than B, then I will get the output as A. The value in A is not greater than B, then I will get the value in B. So this is that's about the conditional. Next one, 
special operators. Asterisk, asterisk, ampersand, asterisk, ampersand are the special operators. Where we use the special operators? Asterisk. Generally, we are using already asterisk in the multiplication in arithmetic operator. But the same asterisk also can be used to represent the pointers. To represent the pointers. So asterisk is used to represent pointers. Represent pointers. Asterisk is used to represent the pointer. And is used to represent address. We already see that uh, scan of percentage G comma ampersand A. Ampersand means address of A. Here, ampersand operator refers the address of address. So these are the special operators. In next session, we'll discuss about the bitwise operators in details because there are so many bitwise operators and or X or not, so many operators are. We'll discuss later. We have to discuss more. In increment and decrement and bit based operators, we will discuss in later, later sessions. So, the basic operators are arithmetic, logical, relational, assignment, conditional, special, bit based, increment, and decrement operator. Arithmetic operators are basically used to perform the simple mathematical calculations. Logical operators are used to check the different conditions. If both conditions are satisfied, then we have to say and. If, none of the, if any one of the conditions is satisfied, we can say it is or. Relation operates nothing but the greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, equal to, not equal to, etc. Assignment operator means equal to. <coughs> Assignment operators are used to store a value into the variable or store the result of an expression into a variable. Conditional operator, the question mark colon is called the conditional operator. It is used to perform check a condition. If A greater than B, it will return A. Otherwise, it will return B. Special operators are Asterisk ampersand is a special operators. Asterisk used to represent the pointers. Those will come to the letter of the functions topic. And end is used to represent the address, which we already discussed that scan of percentage D comma ampersand A means ampersand A refers to the address of A. So what is the need of the specific address of A? We already told that every variable when it is declared, it allocates the memory. So to store the memory, the value to that memory location, you need the address of that memory location. So you can get the address of the memory location with the help of the ambassador and operator. Whenever you say ambassador and A, it means that the address of the A. So then it looks for the specific address and store the same value to the variable. Okay, next topic we'll discuss further.